Hello friends! Today we are making attempt number two of recording a video about the M60A1 Rise Fire Control System. I did try and record this before and I was having a shocker of a day. Um, I'm usually pretty on point with this thing's rangefinder, but it's it's one of those things. It's such arcane old school technology that you have good days and you have bad days. We're hoping today's a good day because I want to actually show you guys how it works. I know a lot of people have trouble understanding it or just have trouble kind of dialing it in. The point here is to get you close, right? So here's our M60A1 Rise. Um, hopefully the frame rate's acceptable. Grafenver tends to choke OBS for resources a bit. It runs at a beautiful 60 frames on my PC, but OBS doesn't always record at 60 frames. In fact, sometimes it drops them really badly. So here's the gunner's primary sight. Uh, 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 no, this is the commander's extension for the gunner's primary sight, the GPSE. I say this because the gunner doesn't actually have access to the rangefinder on the M60A1. This is one of the wonderful quirks of this tank. The rangefinder itself, if we go outside, and this may be where we drop some frames, forgive me if we do. The rangefinder itself is those two eyeball looking baubles on either side of the turret. Each one houses a lens with a mirror behind it, goes into a single tube across the top of the turret. The distance between them gives you your stereoscopic vision, so to speak, although it is not a stereoscopic rangefinder, it's a coincidence rangefinder. There's an important difference, but that's not for this video. And then, uh, as you might guess from the position of the gunner's primary sight, uh, it is behind the gunner. The commander is the one who actually sees it. So, in our little M60A1, and in fact in the M60A3 as well, although with its laser, the commander is the one who's in charge of doing all this shit. So the commander gets the range, then tells the gunner what the commander range is, the gunner then indexes the range into the fire control system, and you hope that nobody's shot at you by the time you get through that entire process. So for the purposes of Gunner Heat PC currently, as the roles are not split apart between gunner and commander, uh, when you go into the gunner's primary site in the M60A1 Rise, you are using the gunner's primary site extension as the commander. When your commander is killed, you will not have access to the gunner's primary site at all. You'll be restricted to the orc site. That may change when they split the roles, I don't know. But even once that happens, if that's the way they go, I would not expect to be able to use a rangefinder if your commander is killed. So. Let's find something to range out on. We don't want something too close. This site has limitations beyond about 1800 meters. It's not very easy to use nor very accurate. Inside about 400, same problem. Plus you have parallax from the gun because the site is mounted high and to the right and the rangefinder is mounted above the gun and to either side. So you've got all kinds of problems factoring in there. Let's start with a stationary target because moving ones can be a little tricky. Let's range find this little fella here. So we press the rangefinder key, which happens to be E in the default bindings. It's probably going to be really hard to see in the video, but there's a slight double image there. What you do is you dial the range up or down. In this case, we want to go up. See, going down has made it worse. So we want to dial the range up. I usually use control plus the scroll wheel until the image looks sharp. We don't see a double image. Now in the low lighting conditions or foggy conditions like we have today on Grafenver, it can be difficult to see where there's no more double image. I'm going to call that 1400. We're going to see... We're pretty close. That's probably like 1250 or something. On a clear sunny day with no haze, it's pretty accurate. I can dial this thing out to about 2500 meters. On a foggy or overcast day like we have here on Grafenver, mm, not so much. Uh, you're going to be probably a couple hundred meters either side. With Sabo, that's not as big a deal within 2,000 meters, for example, but with heat, it is a big deal. You're going to have to really work for that. So let's try a more distant target. For example, this T-55 Hulk out on the range. Now, I do happen to know how far away these Hulks are off the top of my head, but we're not going to cheat. We're going to try to do this the old-fashioned way. So I'm short, I'm dialing in. I know I'm short because I know it's more than 1400, but you can see I'm going out to 4000, which is as far as this will dial, and there's still a slight ghost image. That doesn't mean he's past 4000 meters. At first glance it might seem that way, but because I know where that tank is, and I know roughly how big he should be at this magnification, I know that's not 4000 meters. 
4,000 meters would be close to that far tree line, or halfway between me and that far tree line. Um, this guy is not that far, so we're going to dial backwards. And this is where you have to like plant your eyes on the monitor. I'm not joking, I have to lean right into my screen here. And what you're going to do is you're always going to, at this kind of a range, and especially like a target that's kind of on a, a rise, a hilltop, where there's no real good background reference, you're always going to have a slight double image. When the site's either too far or too close to be really accurate, you're going to have a slight double image. In this case, you're not trying to get no double image because you physically can't do it. What you're trying to do here is pick the side which is the least doubled, in this case the right side of the tank chassis, and the rear of the tank's hull, and we're going to try and get no double image there. I can see if I wind down from 2500, I've got a double on the left and a slight double on the right. I'm going to wind up, and somewhere around 25, 2600, the right side of the hull and the rear, like the left side of the hull, the rear side, become more solid. So we're going to call that 2500, and I can tell you right now that is about 25. And we hit exactly where we're aiming. So do not fall for the trap of trying to chase a perfect image at longer ranges or where you've got a target silhouetted against the sky or against a much more distant piece of terrain. Trees as well seem to have some effect on the way this is rendered um, at longer ranges. I'll tell you right now the way that the devs have accomplished this without killing frame rates is to use a clever trick involving some shaders. Uh, you're not actually rendering the scene twice, you're applying some hocus pocus to make it look like you're rendering the scene twice. Some of the inaccuracy at longer ranges will be probably inherent to that, some of it will be inherent to the actual system being kind of doo-doo at that range. So it is what it is. Here we have another tank. We're going to just dial it in. If I go below about 2200, the right side and left side have very slight doubles. I don't know if you'll even be able to see this on the video compression on YouTube. I apologize if you can't, but I can see a very slight double on the left and the right. The hull of the tank has become blurry. I'm going to wind up at about at about between 23 and 24 it becomes solid. So we're going to call that 23. You have to make best guesses sometimes with this. We're short, I think. So we'll call it, let's try 24. We're actually possibly long, so let's bring it back to 22. 21 maybe even. Let's try 21. Now we are definitely short. Is it 25? Is it the same range as the other hole? Actually, yeah it is. I'm a dumbass. But this makes my point. It's not very precise at long range. Um, Past 2,000 meters, I would use this, but I wouldn't trust it fully, and I'd use some of my own intuition as to what is or is not uh, 2,000 meters plus. You know, you would have to guess. So, for instance, this guy's, I'm pretty sure, further than 2,500. I can see a very clear double there. We're going to wind this up to bring it in. He can't be 4,000, but I'm pretty sure he's more than 25. I'm just looking at the right side of that tank for when it becomes solid. We're going to go 3,000. I think uh, 3,200. We're probably going to be long, but we'll try 3,200. And we're aiming just around the middle of his tracks. We were high. So he's about 3,000, perhaps. 3,000 or 3,100. 3,000. So there's going to be a little fire and adjust. But once you get in the ballpark, particularly easy with Sabre, because it shoots flat, relatively speaking, you can adjust from there. This is going to be the main way you conduct gunnery with this tank at longer ranges. Make your best estimate using the rangefinder and a little bit of intuition. Wind it back or forth until you get a hit. You can use holds as well, I guess, if you really want to, but I find that actually adjusting the sight just fits better with how I, I work. Let's go back to a different target. Let's try some of these orange target cheeses here so we'll go for this guy we'll wind down since I know that's got to be closer than 3,000 21 to 22 let's see it's about 20 to 21 I was a little high on that one let's go to heat next round we're gonna have to anyway because heat shows the errors a lot better 
obviously it has a more curving trajectory. Let's go for this orange cheese here. Again, the same issue, at that range you're going to end up with ghosting no matter what, so we're just looking to get it so that there's a minimal amount of ghosting and one side of the target appears solid. At about 23, 2400, the right side appears solid, even though I've got ghosting on the left. We'll aim center of scene mass, and we hit a little high, so it's probably about 22, 21, 22, somewhere around there. But we're close enough, you can get my point, we can adjust from this. So let's go over to this guy. We know it's going to be more than that, probably. I see some doubling appearing at the bottom of the target on the right-hand side there, so I'm going to wind back. Now doubling appears on the inside of the right edge, if that makes sense. That's pretty solid. We're going to call it 23 and hope for the best. Out goes the heat round, and it's close enough that we still got a hit. Let's try a closer target now. The wind on the bushes makes this is, makes this very distracting. We're still getting some doubling regardless, but I would say probably the most solid... I'm just looking at the feet of the target now, the actual feet of the target. That looks solid at 900. That is 900, almost exact. So you see what I mean? It's not a case of it's going to be perfect, you're going to have a clear outline, no ghost image at all. You're going to have some leftover ghost image at various ranges. The key is to get as minimal of a ghost as possible, so let's say he's 1300 on that truck, we have to manually apply a lead here because there's no auto lead. Little far forwards on the lead, but we hit him. Let's try our BMP silhouette. This process does take time, because you're dialing the range back and forth. So I would not recommend this if you're pressed for time, like you've got a shit ton of T-72s bearing down on you. Just use the AUX sight and use holds. We got a hit. I'd call that pretty close. So using holds on the AUX sight, of course in the real tank, and potentially once the rolls are split apart in Gunner Heat PC, especially if you have a human playing with you when multi-crew comes in, uh, they will be just using the rangefinder independently to try and figure out what the range is while you're just conducting fire and adjust gunnery, one would presume. So, for instance, I know from my previous shot that's about 1800 meters, but say the uh, commander has told me, yep, that BMP silhouette's about 1800. So I'm going to place probably the top of this cross for 2000, about where I think I should be aiming. Off we go, and that is a hit. It looked a little high, but that was a hit. Don't underestimate the Humble Orc site. This thing is very useful. Very, very useful in a multitude of situations. We're a little high there, so that's probably about a thousand. So we're going to hold the 800 marker on the top. Center mass hit. Well, a bit left because parallax, but close enough. Do not underestimate this site. Um, like even in the Abrams, once your fire control system gets knocked out and you're back to the Gunner's Auxiliary site, do not underestimate them. You can make solid hits with these sites if you're good at estimating range, or if the commander knows what it is and tells you, and you have a decent idea of how much lead to apply manually. If you're a T-72 player, um, you're going to adapt well to doing this kind of manual gunnery because you already don't have auto lead to kind of lean on. Uh, the M60A1 doesn't have it even for the gunner's primary site, but it becomes particularly relevant here with the auxiliary sites. It's probably a little too much lead for that truck. We'll hold about there, level with the back axle, or what would be the back axle, and there's a nice center mass hit. So, guys, it's as simple as that. I mean, it's probably more simple than how I made it sound, but that is how you conduct gunnery with the M60A1 Rise in Gunner Heat PC with its Ghost Image Coincidence Rangefinder. When the T64A arrives, let's see if I can kill the frames this time. Oh, yeah, there's the frame drop. Uh, I'm sorry if this makes anyone nauseous. We'll, uh, we'll scooch over though. Like I said, this is beautiful 60 frames a second, no drops at all on my screen, but OBS just doesn't like this map. But once our little T64A friend over here arrives in the game, you have another coincidence rangefinder, however it's split image instead of ghost image. In my opinion, I say this completely out of my ass because I've not used one, 
but in my opinion, from watching how it works, the split image is probably going to be quicker and easier to use. Maybe, maybe more precise, I don't know. It depends. But um, same sort of thing, you're going to need some time, you're going to need some eyeballing, uh, you need to have a sort of sixth sense for what is and isn't right, even if the site seems to be on. But when this guy arrives, same sort of deal. T64B, T80B, you don't need to worry. They've got incredibly Yorba fire control systems, better than the Abrams we have at the moment, obviously without thermals. Um, so you don't need to worry about that with those. But for the T64A and the M60A1 Rise and for the Leopard, although I don't know which exact system it uses, I know the Leopard 1A, 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 1A
but it doesn't blur quite so much. So, like, the amplitude of the jitters is lower, I guess, if that makes sense. So I find it easier to compensate for this. He's going to be closer than 1,200. We'll call, uh, we'll call that about 12. It's probably more. Yeah, it was more. That guy is 1,200. Um, but, yeah, like, it's easier for me to compensate for the lower amplitude shake than for whatever this shit is. Like, what the fuck? Good luck. I didn't counter my motion there, so of course that was going to miss. But anyway, M60A1 Rise Fire Control. Hope you guys got something useful out of this. Hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, hopefully YouTube compression doesn't murder the ghost image too badly. Like, the overcast weather makes it... A Seriously, the, the the lighting conditions make a huge condition, a uh, huge sorry difference um, in how well this works. On a clear sunny day, with good contrast, it works pretty well. You can range pretty accurately. On an overcast day, it's pretty awful, as you saw um, or didn't see, as the case may be. On a like at night around dawn and dusk, literally don't bother, dude. Just use the use the battle site, use the orc site. But yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, hope it finds you well. Hope you are enjoying Gunner Heat PC, or if you haven't played it yet, uh, but you're keeping tabs on it. I hope that uh, at some point you're able to try out the game and see whether it's for you or not. But in the meantime, good hunting, and I will catch you all on the next video, whatever and whenever that may be.